Curve Phase of Moon. My name is Blake Cousins, and we're live today, Friday, May 24th, 2013, and we're going to go over some amazing, uh, you know, videos that we received right over here at Third Phase of Moon for the month of May, and it's been quite a busy month. We've been real busy on the ground. We uh, took a look at the volcano, the Kilauea volcano, and wanted to find out what was going on over there in regards to the phenomenon and possible portals using the volcanoes. And we found 3,000-year-old carvings, old ancient carvings right here in Hawaii that could possibly be proof of ancient aliens. And so I found some evidence of what looked to me like maybe the Hawaiians possibly, um, you know, were abducted themselves, and they carved it in stone right there at Puuko. And, you know, amazing interviews with, uh, you know, friends like Dr. J. Andy Elias setting up amazing in- interviews with, uh, you know, the whistleblower, Ray Gardner, in regards to the J-Rod, uh, Ron Gardner, uh, you know, J-Rod escaped from Area 51. He explains how through a Stargate an incredible, uh, you know, just insight coming into third phase of the moon. We also got a video from Qatar of a man flying in an airplane, capturing a UFO right side, right outside from the cabin, out in the foreground, behind the wing. A UFO suddenly appears, and he captures uh, an amazing uh, video of what looks to be a UFO. And most people, there's a lot of people out there saying it's like a star or or a planet or a weather balloon, even saying going to that uh, far extent. And this thing actually vanishes into thin air, and I don't think weather balloons or stars or anything like that just absolutely vanish and uh, dematerialize out of thin air. And then another amazing video from Oklahoma. Unfortunately, there was a disaster over there with the tornado, but there was a man on the ground right there, just right outside of Moore, Oklahoma, right minutes after the tornado, what appears to be a fleet of UFOs, uh, you know, rising out of the aftermath. And then unfortunately, there was life lost, but, you know, there was um, something maybe that the aliens wanted to take a look at what was going down on the ground over there. So we're taking uh, calls from around the world, and the number to call in is 347-934-0378. And we got our uh, special correspondent, Dr. J. Andy Elias, right here at Third Phase of Moon. Welcome. Thank you, Blake. How are you? Hey, we're doing uh, doing good, just, you know, keeping busy, a lot of video coming in, and uh, we look forward to taking some testimony. I wanted to, um, you know, ask you to come on board tonight to tell everybody what's going on with this amazing book you and I collaborated on. Oh yes, the first of its kind for Third Phase of Moon, Third Phase of Moon, the largest UFO YouTube channel. And for all those people listening out there, this is the new station to get your UFO news. We are coming out with a book. Blake and I collaborated on it, and it's the top 12 sightings that we thought were the the coolest and the best. They got amazing photographs, and you'll hear the inside story of what each one was about. Actually, there was a few that I interviewed the people, and just to get the deep, deep inside story was amazing, and all the readers out there are going to get to see it very soon. Yeah, we really look forward to sharing this book. We had testimony, and you did a lot of interviews from people around the world, including Australia and the U.K., and, uh, you know, all the way in in, uh, Myrtle Beach and you know we're trying to cover the four corners of the earth getting people's amazing videos so they could showcase it right here at Third Phase of Moon we're going to go to our next caller standby John Airy Code 201 welcome to Third Phase of Moon hey what's going on Blake it's Mark hey Mark how's it going so um, what do you think about some of the videos that you've uh, seen on Third Phase basically let's go to uh, the video of the UFO uh, captured from within the cabin on a flight on its way back to Qatar. And where in Qatar? Yes. Oh, you didn't get to see that video? Oh, no, no, I didn't see that one yet. But I was. I wanted to talk about a little bit about the one seen in Oklahoma and the one yes, tornado. Uh, yeah, the, the fleet of UFOs over uh, more Oklahoma after the tornado. Go, go ahead. Uh, tell us your thoughts on what you saw there. So, yeah, I was thinking about it, and I came to a couple of conclusions that, you know, actually, if you look at that date, that's the date where in Teotihuacan, where that means, you know, where man met with God, with the gods, um, that date, the sun aligned above the sun pyramid on the 19th, 
you know, and people were expecting something to happen on that day as well, you know. And I found evidence that that this this disaster wasn't, you know, like um, a natural disaster. It was man-made, you know, using uh, J2X pumps, you know, from, you know, rockets that pump. Every second they pump hundreds of pounds of hydrogen and oxygen to the air through a chamber not larger than a spaghetti pot. So, if you look at that, that that's actually called TMC cloud, or a, you know, it's a it's a, it's a torus molecular cloud. So, um, that that pumps out like a you know like a, like a big ass cloud, and it and with harp and all that, the engineer it's coming to you know some kind of some kind of storm, and well, let's uh, you know let's get. Let's get to harp about uh, you know Jesse Ventura spoke of um, you know the conspiracy that he claims that he basically talked to some people in the know about this uh, weapon that the United States may have I have no idea but they're claiming that they have the power to control weather what about that John and what did you think of the video uh, over there in Moore Oklahoma you know I think that was a crazy video and that goes on to collaborate with what many people are saying that these Visitors are watching every amazing event, you know, everything from Columbus coming to the, U- the U.S., the New World at the time, from 9-11 to this 9-11 Oklahoma. What I think this Oklahoma footage shows, what I think it's the greatest, is the fact that it's a fleet. It's a fleet of unknown objects that are there with 300 mile hour per winds. I mean, and they're just behaving in their own world. And I think that's just... I give the guy... Props who who caught it, and on the same time, I think it's one of the better videos out there. You know, he, um, you know, I I love it when people are filming the UFOs and they have their own commentary as we're watching their experience at the first time. And uh, you know, when he's seeing it, he quite was seemed very uh, excited at the time of filming it. He was kind of almost in disbelief, but he uh, just really after a while, he told me after he. Uh, allowed us to put it on third phase that it was a life-changing or mind-blowing experience now let's get to the footage from um you know qatar the airplane footage let's go into a little bit of detail on this because people have a lot of opinion on it what did you think and what did you come away with after seeing the video dr j and elias you know that's another great footage that came from a plane I you know you posted another one that might have been from Korea there's a lot that have been going around the internet but this is great because this is coming out of the Middle East clearly it's on a commercial flight and if you watch the wing which is traveling parallel to the ground you see this object come up and kind of go at a, a 45 degree angle or so upwards and it's clearly not stationary, so some debunkers might say, oh, it's a moon, or it's a star, or it's a uh, you know, space station. No, it's not. Look at it. Watch the way it moves. Pay close attention to where the ground is, to where the wing is, and to where the object is moving. And that right there is another one of the great videos out there right now. That is definitely something that deserves to have further investigation. And thank God for Third Phase of the Moon showing it, because... If you guys didn't show it to the world, it may have became, you know, uh, a lost mystery. You know, we um, we try to analyze it the best we could. We blew it up a thousand percent and slowed it down nine hundred percent. And we look at it frame by frame, and we could tell that the object is not, uh, you know, like some light from within the cabin shining out the window. It is actually out there, and the way it disappears, I don't know what. After all the comments I've read and, uh, you know, the UFO experts, nobody ever says anything about it just dematerializing in thin air. We show the video and it, there, there's an end to it and uh, it disappears. That's what's amazing to me about some of the comments on, uh, you know, why they think it's a planet. Planets just don't disappear. Absolutely, and the fact that it just dematerializes is a, is a very, very big ordeal, and people overlook that. You know, they really do, and it's a shame because that right there is just showing that there's a different technology that is completely more advanced than the physics that we humans on this earth are supposed to know or what is ta- taught to us at schools. 
we just uh, act, released a video yesterday, um, you know, an alien type spacecraft. There are like multiple crafts caught in this video. And what it looked to us is that they were actually surveying like some kind of a power plant of some sort. And we're getting feedback from the UK, the JSB 007, uh, a great UFO hunter out there. You know, had comments saying that they were actually, uh, you know, like Mark was saying about the chemtrails earlier. Maybe they're really concerned about, you know, the release of the chemicals into the air and causing this global warming uh, disaster, quote unquote. What did you think of the video? To me, it, you know, it really looked amazing to me. The lights were popping and, uh, you know, it looked like they were flown under some kind of intelligent design and they were real graceful in their, uh, you know, their way of flying through flying through the air the way they did. Oh, I completely agree. I completely agree. You know, there's something going on in this planet. There's an increase of sightings, and yes, it's it's known that everybody now has a camera in their pocket, so more people are filming this, you know, phenomena. But MUFON and other reporting agencies have reported, you know, a large increase in the sightings. Something is happening, and it seems like they are paying attention to what we're doing to this Earth, whether it be through polluting it or using the oil, destroying our fossil fuels, all of that combined. And I'm sure they have the solutions, and you know, the $600 trillion a year industries would sort of collapse overnight if things such as free energy actually came to fruition. And I don't know if that's the big argument, but... It seems to be so that they're definitely interested in the well-being of this planet. So, you know, Mark, what do you have to, uh, do you have a opinion on what do you think the alien agenda is? Or are they concerned about uh, the way the people, uh, you know, control the environment and uh, you know, put it in jeopardy in its way of our, our lifestyle living? Yeah. Actually, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about that. Actually, that one guitar as well. I think, actually, I did remember seeing that one, and I just wanted to say about that and what, and what you just said that 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 craft, whatever it was, it looked like something like out of the movies, like something like that we probably created us humans or something something like humans that you know that just looks like something out of a Stargate SG-1 or something, you know, just flying through the air like a military shuttle program. Remember I was telling last, I called a couple weeks ago and I was telling you about the, the military shuttle program that they, that's they been confirmed, actually, and mainstream news, you know, and, and uh, so... Well, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about where, where some of that actually came from, and we're doing some uh, major work and some, uh, you know, some groundbreaking information coming out this week in regards to area 51 j rod and you know the test vehicles and the reverse engineering tell us a little bit about what we took away on uh, you know these interviews with uh, you know the couple of people uh, one of them was mr uh, ray gardner ron gardner uh, oh yes ron, ron gardner. gardner you mean yeah Oh, he is definitely connected to the inside the secret government. You know, he's, I don't know what his connection is, but he definitely seems to have knowledge before it comes out. He's good friends with Dan Burrish. He claims to be friends with one of the MJ1 members. And he basically reconfirmed a story of S4, where there was apparently a crash in Kingman, Arizona in 1953. And there was a gray that survived. And they brought it to... Area 51, and in particular, S4. Now, people who go to S4, do, or people who go to Area 51 do not have the clearance to get into S4. So it's, it's definitely higher up, it's, it's, but it's, it's within Area 51. Nonetheless, that being was kept there for decades, and Dr. Dan Burris was working with it. Uh, that was just one of the many things he revealed, on top of there being several back-engineered craft. Uh, you know, he's definitely someone we need to have back on because he's got some more revelations to make for the public, and he's just about ready because he's getting in age. Yeah, we also received uh, a video um, graciously from Open Minds TV, which we put out a third phase, and it went very viral because this past week we've been focusing heavy on Area 51. And the Schaefer went into detail at the 2011 Congress, UFO Congress, and, you know, basically confirmed what Ron Gardner was saying and you know the whole story is basically really tight and I really believe what they're saying 
is basically the truth. And uh, I felt really happy about the end. We called it Escape from Area 51 for a reason because j was able to, you know, go home through the Stargate. And I thought that was absolutely fantastic. And uh, they should basically make a movie on that. What do you think, John? Oh, I completely agree. And, you know, speaking of Stargates, there apparently are several of them. You know, when people talk about the war in Iraq that we went the U.S. invaded in 2003, which was sort of linked to 9-11. They say we went after these weapons of mass destruction. What I've read in more than one source, a few sources, that we did find weapons of mass destruction. It wasn't chemical. It wasn't nuclear. It wasn't biological weapons that we found. But the weapons of mass destruction we found was Project Yellow Book, which Yellow Book came from looking glass technology, which came from the Roswell wreckage. What it is, is basically a device that tells that person or gives them a glimpse into their future. And it could change varying on their moods. Now, there was an agreement among the MJ-12 members to dismember all of them because these were creating wars, and they literally were. So everybody complied except Saddam Hussein. So when George Bush said we were going into Iraq to fetch a weapon of mass destruction, we did. And the first place that we attacked, if the first place that we took over was one of his museums and we built some special steps to get things down and it was it was there was a quite a secretive operation going on there and it just makes you want to wonder why go after a museum? What's there? Who's hiding there? But, uh, there are stargates uh, everywhere there's ancient gods, Egypt, Greece, South America where the mines were, uh, Easter Island, uh, everywhere, everywhere at the time. But it's definitely an interesting topic, and that can be on go on for for decades. Just talking about you know that. Uh, maybe it was one of the reasons uh, besides the attack because you know George Bush really didn't have any reason to go after Iraq and to go after a Stargate and knowing what was going on in the country. And if Saddam had power like that, maybe that is one good reason that we went in there and they kept it a secret from us. And hopefully that goes in uh, directions that help uh, the U.S. and in general. Let's um. Now let's get to the subject and still stick to uh, the military and what was with these wars because there's some rumor going out in uh, about Afghanistan and the Varama ship in a cave and there's been 15 U.S. soldiers that went missing trying to retrieve the you know this Varama UFO found in an Afghani cave. Have you heard anything about this? Absolutely, and this is a huge, huge story, and I'm wondering why no one's covered it or what's come to fruition since. What happened was is there was a Vimana. A Vimana is basically described as a flying craft that was written into the ancient Hindu book, holy book. I don't remember the name. I think it's the Mahabharata, something like along the lines of that. And it's basically described these ships from 3,000 and 4,000 years ago that were flying the way saucers fly right now, flying saucers. Nonetheless, in Afghanistan, apparently the military found one, the U.S. military found one in a cave that had been in some sort of time vault. And within 24 hours of finding this Vimana, almost every head of state from the Western world, the head of state from the U.K., Obama sent somebody, the Vladimir Putin's emissary went, uh, someone from China came, the, the French president. Everybody came to visit it within 24 hours. Now, what was decided among those heads of the states? I don't know. But nonetheless, they all met there in Afghanistan in a war zone because there was a Vimana found. And, that, and if a, that gets to the press, that would be a huge, huge story because it would confirm everything they've been saying. I think the way it would be leaked one way or the other is from uh, the family members themselves because they would have to have some kind of reason why their you know, son or daughter went missing in Afghanistan and they have to be informed what was going on. So hopefully you know, the families will come forward because I'm sure they may be pressed not to uh, speak about it because of national security, but it really seems that there's something going on over there. I don't know if it's some kind of story that's thrown out to you know, throw us on a curve, but the way the information is coming in from a few different sources, it seems like it's a very legitimate story. And with all these other countries, like you just said, China, Russia, getting involved, who's going to be able to get 
their hand on it, are they going to be able to cut it up and slice it up like a piece of pie, or is it one whole piece, and how are they going to keep that from a, as a combined country's keeping secrets together? Hopefully, you know, one side leaks, leaks it one way or the other. You know, that's what we truly hope is for the disclosure to happen. Uh, obviously, there are national security reasons. When you have a device that could fly in any direction without having inertia, killing the pilot after several hundred miles an hour, something that's flying 10,000 miles an hour and makes a 90-degree turn, obviously that is a huge advantage in air warfare or even bombing missions from one country to another. So whoever possesses such a technology definitely has an advantage over those who don't. And that could be a huge national security concern. Now, if most of those countries know already then what is really the secret to be hiding now i'm still sure there are some of those concerns like stanton friedman said there shouldn't be full disclosure but i think there should be somewhat disclosure that we should at least be told that we're not alone because it is truly the height of arrogance to believe that we're not alone in in this vast vast universe uh, with the kepler telescope finding habitable planets on a almost a daily basis at this point you know the, you know the the continuous cover up. Okay, let's just say they the Varama they found this ancient artifact that dates back you know two hundred fifty thousand years ago, and they release it. I'm not saying that it works. It seems like it's not a functional piece, but they have something in their possession that, you know, is just absolutely a fantastic archae archaeological find. Let's just put it out there in a sense of that way. We don't have to admit that we're you know, from this alien in origin, let's just produce the artifact and let's, you know, look at it as a history kind of point of view. Mark, what would you have to say about the Brahma and, you know, these other governments getting their hand on things of, you know, getting the possession of... I, I, would, I would like to say that, you know, this this whole alien agenda thing started off with basically mainly the, you know, the Roswell incident which led to, you know, eventually the NASA program and, and flying into space. And I think it, that it's more than not just our curiosity that was this the cause of all this. this is the, the, the whole NASA, everything was a big cover-up at the end of the day for you to believe when these aliens come that they are gods or something like that and that, you know, they're meant to rule over us, you know. And then, but at the end of the day, it's really that, they're not meant to last. The only thing that's meant to last is God and Christ, you know. And that's where you got to find the truth. You know what I'm saying? Oops, I may have lost Mark there. Hey, um, let's get back to some more of the amazing video coming in. Days of Moon. And, uh, you know, J-Rod, again, let's, J-Rod, people have been very fascinated about what's been uh, put out this past week. And uh, we were putting out some exclusives basically in regards to, you know, the genitalia of the alien. Uh, apparently, nobody's ever seen these pictures before, and it was classified. Let's go into a little bit of detail. It seems like there was some some kind of, um, you know, what? how would you describe it, Dr. J? I don't know, but this is actually a, a, a sad but true statement. There was some protocol at S4 which required the, naked, the alien to be naked, and that's why it was drawn in such a way uh, but I just think it's funny that it's making a firestorm then again you know what does an alien thing look like anyway but the point being is this alien for five decades plus had to live in such a way where it never closed itself from when it was found in a suit or so they say was there any information of what came out um, I don't know if I missed it or if you or anybody else knows about like what they what they ate over there, what the what the the government fed them. You know, that's one thing I've actually been asking, and I haven't got that answer. But Dr. Burrish goes into this complete different conspiracy that I've ever heard, uh, but other people seem to have corroborated it. Basically, it's called the doctrine of convergent timelines, and what it means is that there are different timelines and. Since a spacecraft can alter gravity, if it can do so, then it can alter time, and therefore it's a time machine. Well, by doing that, you could travel through time. Apparently, this gray alien, the J-Rod, was an extraterrestrial and a human. It was a human 52,000 years in the future 
that after some catastrophic event lived underground, the Nordics are the ones that were able to live above ground. After several thousand years, apparently they went to the moon, and then they went to Mars, and then they went to the reticuli. Let's get this and then they the populated viewers. three planets there. J. Rod basically. So J. Rod is not an alien. He is. Um, he he's not he he's he's an alien, but he's not an extraterrestrial. He's not from another planet. He's he's you know he's basically from Earth, and he's uh you know like you just said from the future. So he's not an extraterrestrial, but he's kind of alien to what we're accustomed to as a human right now. Exactly. Right? According to Dan Burrish, that's exactly what what he's saying. Yes, that this is this is fifty two thousand years in the future of what we would look like living underground. So we want to thank uh, Bradford Blair for being here, Fabian Starr, the Palladian Truth, all chiming in here, listening right here on Third Phase of Moon Live. And if anybody's got any questions, we got a few minutes left, and it's uh, you should call in at three four seven nine three four zero three seven eight. We got a few more minutes right here at Third Phase. Now, you know, J-Rod, let's get to more of this. So, you know, he escaped, but now there's other beings that were left behind. Are they still living that we're aware of? And uh, how are they being treated? Basically the same as they did J-Rod, and do they have names of any kind? You know, I don't know the other names. I've heard J-Rod's real name is Kayla. I've heard some other ones that I didn't stick to memory, uh, or some other ones that are possibly some Yazis along but I don't know how true that one is but there are several aliens living amongst us there's hybrids apparently this is according to researchers and whistleblowers there was an exchange program where 12 aliens came to earth and 12 humans went to whatever planet they were from possibly Zeta Reticuli out of those 12 humans only eight returned two apparently died on that planet two returned home and or two two decided to stay and eight returned home uh, of these aliens, there's still a, 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 a program going on where they're going back and forth. They're living amongst us, and there's different species, and they're actually working side by side with humans in these underground extraterrestrial bases, and they're uh, helping us bridge the gap with technology. At least this is what the whistleblowers are saying. Well, let's get back to, um, you know, the, we, the Area 51 story is quite amazing new uh testimony has been coming out with uh, the retired cia guy claiming that the military is ready to overrun it with the u.s army along with eisenhower behind uh, commander-in-chief operating the whole thing but they d- decided not to do it is there any way that we're ever going to find out what's happening with area 51 it seems like they're their own uh, country right now and uh, go by the, their own role Honestly, I don't think we'll ever get the full truth, and for national security reasons, A, and B, because things are going to private contractors. If you want to get things out of the hands of where people can see them, put them in a private corporation. Things like Blackwater USA, which you know helps VIPs, the private military in other countries, well, they can also be responsible for guarding Area 51 and S4. So it's very possible that there are these joint military slash private corporation bases or just bases that are run with private citizens that are never going to be answerable to the United States citizens. It's sad, but it's more than likely true. Hey, if anybody's online right here, here in the flash chat and uh, we continue on to the break, if the air cuts, if it cuts out on air YouTube here in the future, but we're going to continue the uh, radio show here for a few minutes. Anybody want to comment on the flash chat? Ask any questions for Dr. Jandy Elias, myself, Blake Cousins, right here at Third Phase of Moon. Go for it. And uh, you know, we're people uh, are saying here that they're saying there's a lot of U- Area 51 UFO technology right now going. It's been moved to Utah from uh, Flycatch. That's a pretty good uh, insight. And uh, you know, maybe Area 51 is it what it used to be, and uh, right now and. Maybe they have relocated it to Utah. I've heard that a few times. Have you heard any of that through the, um, you know, the grapevine there, Dr. J? Yeah, I've heard the same thing. I've heard Utah is one of the bases, and Dulce, New Mexico. I don't know the city in Utah, but Dulce, New Mexico, seems to be another Area 51 sort of like base. Now, Wright Patterson has always been a secretive base. There are hangars there that you, know, you you have to have the highest security to get into. But nonetheless, like you said, Utah is on the top of the list of being something new, and so is 
Dulce, New Mexico. Now, let me add something about Area 51. Ever since the federal government finally acknowledged it recently, prior to that, they wouldn't acknowledge it even though it appeared on the cover of Popular Mechanics from a Soviet satellite picture. Besides that point, the moment the U.S. public started, and the world for that matter, started to get a hold of what was going on there in the early 90s when people started to see weird things flying in late 80s, I think personally they moved everything out of there into some other base because the base that they're probably doing the most secret stuff right now is probably completely unknown to us. Now that we're talking about Utah and Dulce, New Mexico, there's a good chance they moved out of there too. Well, you know, we could still go on more about Area 51 and what's been going on right here at Third Phase of Moon, but unfortunately our radio show is going to be closing here in a couple minutes. But before we shut it down, I really want to uh, thank Mark for joining us. Mark, any quick last words for our viewers at Third Phase of Moon? Yeah, I just wanted to mention I heard about um, a couple secret bases like in Colorado that are underground as well as hidden runways in Africa and places, you know, exotic like that and, and, and deserted locations that, you know, UFOs and military jets or planes, you know, come down. And, you know, it's just, they're all over the place, just like they were all over the place in ancient times. They're still all over the place now, but they're just hidden, you know. Right now it's covert, and soon it will be, you know, revealed to us, you know. But right now, you know, it's still not the time. That's why we're still holding information. But at the same time, it's le leaking out. You know, at the same time, it's leaking out. So, because it's not all meant to happen at the same on the same day. It's it's meant for you to see, so you can feel it and you feel what's happening. And that's how you change your mind, either whether the good side or the bad side, whatever side that is. But personally, I believe the good side is where God and Christ is, and the bad side is where the angel, I mean, the fallen angels and the Anunnaki and all they. And the graves lie, you know, and you gotta pick a side because I, all I know is that the alien side is not meant to last, no matter what, you know, happening. You know what I'm saying? I so, think we know what you're saying here, and I think uh, a lot of people listening right now know what you're saying. Hey, thanks a lot, Mark, for joining us. And um, you know, now, you know, it's been a good show tonight, Doctor Danny Lice. I wanted to ask you. Let's get back to the third phase of Moon, the book that we're going to be releasing here very shortly right here and we're going to be putting it up on our website we picked the top 12 do you have a favorite and do you want to go into a little bit give a little bit of detail to our viewers and listeners about what you think your favorite out of the out of the 12 is right here and in, in um go ahead you know actually i'm leaning over to Towards two. The first one would have to be the Latunda, which the witch doctor, which alien, whatever you call it. Most people call it the Chupacabra, others would call it the Tunda, whatever. That is one of my favorites, where a Colombian farmer stalks out this beast that's been hunting goats and dogs and chickens and other animals, you know, on that island, and he shoots it dead. And you see the before picture and the after photo. I think that is definitely my favorite. As far as vehicles, mine would have to be what we received from the UK, which you got a year ago. And that was from Mr. Johnny Webb. What it was was he was taking a photograph in Germany on a trip from England. And he was looking at the spire of the church. As he was looking up... He took photographs because it was beautiful. When he got home and he was going through the photos, he saw a metallic dome-shaped disc with portholes and windows that at least they looked like that on the craft. He thought that was amazing. Now, backtrack. Before he took those photographs, or right around the time he took those photographs, he was on tour. And when he was on tour, that's when he saw the church, so he went inside the church. Inside the church, there was photographs of the church that, because it survived the bombings from World War II. There was a photograph from 1945, and in almost the exact same position, you see an anomalous object that actually looks disc-shaped. And the fact that you get to see both of these photographs in the Third Phase of Moon book is amazing. And people are, I think that that's just history repeating itself right there. So those are my top two, Blake. Dr. Dandy Elias, I really want to thank you for uh, joining us right here at Third Phase. No problem, Blake. Let's just remind all the viewers and listeners about the other radio show, Dr. Greer, this Thursday, May 30th, on freedomslips.com, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time again. Freedomslips.com, S-L-I-P-S.com, Dr. Greer. 
Dr. Greer. Yeah, that's going to always good to have Dr. Greer on board, and I look forward to that show. Everybody, uh, freedomslips.com will be uh, posting it here at Third Phase, but be sure to check it out on uh, freedomslips.com live. On, And I'll be on the show as well, joining the show, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks again, Dr. Jandy Elias. Anytime, Blake. All right. You know, if anybody out there's captured anything amazing in regards to UFOs, we sure would like to see it. And the best way to contact us is Third the Moon via Skype. So you keep your eyes on the skies. My name's Blake Cousins. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>